Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Happy New Year. Today's webinar will cover the ASC 61850 SEL Manager, which is our substation configuration tool. And we're going to share our interoperability uh, workshop experience for the 2021 session. Next slide, please. ASC is a leading RTU and IED uh, test tool vendor in North America. <clears throat> we support both legacy and uh, standard TCP IP protocols and serial protocols. We were founded in 1988 and became part of the Calcatech family in 2015. Our SCT tool or ASC 61850 SEL manager application was first introduced in 2007 and has been used in all the 61850 interoperability workshops since 2015. This year we're uh, proud to introduce the support for IID file imports in our SCT tool. And a little bit about myself, I'm a sales engineer for Applied Systems Engineering. I have a variety of experiences across uh, SCADA industries, electric power, uh, get oil and gas, and I support uh, training of DMP3 protocol and some of our test sets, as well as provide customer uh, care and support. Also on today's uh, call is Starin Joes, who's our principal protocol engineer, uh, over 17 years of experience across the industry, supporting a variety of protocols, including IEC 61850, which he's an expert, substation configuration language and associated um, activities for IC61850 configuration. And Starin is also a trainer of the 61850 protocol and our 61850 test set portfolio. Today's agenda, we're going to talk about the 2021 um, IOP workshop and some, some discuss some of the changes that um, were introduced this year compared to uh, previous IOPs. We're gonna talk about the uh, vendors and OEMs that participated in this workshop. And from the top-down perspective, uh, as far as design is concerned, we're gonna begin with a discussion on the single line diagram, how we assign logical nodes to a single line diagram and functionality associated with that. We're going to begin with a, a sample um, single line di diagram and then progress further through the tool and talk about how um, the design is implemented in that fashion from top down. From an engineering perspective, we're going to talk about the ICD file import as well as uh, the, abil the ability of our tool to uh, import new ICD files from vendors, such as the case of a new feature was added by uh, a hardware OEM or uh, some other new features there that need to be incorporated in the overall design. We're also going to go through a data set uh, definition, configuration of use messages and report control blocks. Our tool also supports uh, goose signal mapping and we'll go through that devices. And then uh, we'll also discuss the uh, client mapping side for uh, report control blocks and export of the uh, finalized SCD file. Uh, with SCD file, we also will be uh, demonstrating the IID portion of that for the import. <clears throat> with an IID import, you can update the overall design with those new features in the event that you have a new file that an end user has um, introduced some um, um, engineering changes and you want to incorporate all of those into the overall project. And so we'll, we'll walk through that process as well. Next slide, please. 2021 was a little bit different 
than uh, previous years thanks to the COVID pandemic. This was a 100% remote event with uh, all folks independently uh, using their SET tools and files to um, prove or prove out their interoperability capabilities. The entire uh, SED file configuration was performed by a third party by the name of Power Engineers instead of the actual vendors themselves. And the whole substation engineering project was performed in each of these SET tools instead of using a partial configuration in each tool. And Power Engineers was successful in completing the virtual IOP using our SEL manager as per the schedule. And all OEMs and vendors tested the configuration using the, the files that were generated from our tool. Next slide. And uh, without further ado, I'll, I'll let my colleague, Staren Joes, now uh, assume uh, the discussion and talk about some of the vendor uh, participation in the uh, workshop. Uh, thanks, Larry, for the detailed introduction. Uh, so to summarize the virtual interoperability workshop uh, 2021, uh, we had several IED models participated. Uh, we had different IED models from Cell, Siemens, GE, Schneider, Toshiba, Hitachi, and VCMAX. And we also had uh, simulators and test clients from vendors like Dobble, uh, Cisco, and uh, our tool also participated as a test tool. Uh, and we also had tools from TMW. We also had a SCADA clients like a Cell, Artac, uh, and uh, Schneider. Basically, these were, these were, these were the gateways uh, acted as a 650 clients. And uh, uh, to just give you an overview of SEL Manager, uh, SEL Manager is a SET tool. And uh, the view only version of the SC SCL manager is available with the AC61 FT tested purchases. Uh, but today we will focus on the old SCL manager features, not only the view only mode, we'll also talk about other uh, features that we have. Uh, there were several features added in SCL manager as part of the interoperability workshop uh, preparation. Uh, we changed the uh, view and edit options of goose and reports. Uh, we also uh, are supporting QC signal mapping uh, and uh, Goose SV supervision LN configurations. Uh, previously, uh, we had a different workflow to do that. Uh, we also added the feature to uh, exclusively add and edit subnetworks under addressing. Then the other major feature addition was uh, to support the newer version of ICD, ICDs into the project and also import IAD after the engineering. This is the demo setup that we have uh, for, the, uh, for the session. Uh, we have a uh, SEL manager running in a PC and uh, we will be importing ICD files into the SEL manager project. Uh, and uh, further, we will do the engineering and generate the SCD configuration, and we also have IAD files from manufacturers as part of the interoperability workshop. And we will show how the IAD files can be imported into the SCL Manager project and uh, work with the newer version of SCD file. Uh, we will also demonstrate how multiple versions of the ICD files can be incorporated into the project when the project engineering is ongoing. Uh, finally, we will talk about the AC61 FT test set. Uh, we will import the uh, SCD file into test set and show you the client and server modes. Uh, if you are interested in the monitoring mode functions, you, you may browse and uh, log into the previous webinar. We have uh, walked through the details of monitoring mode in the previous webinar. But here in this webinar, we will only talk about client and server mode. We will load the CD file into the server and client modes and show the data traffic quickly. Uh, because of the extensive operations uh, we have during this demo, 
uh, it might go uh, beyond the time limit. Uh, initially, we had planned one hour, uh, but we anticipate uh, that it will go uh, maybe up to one or one and a half hours, including the question answer session. So please be prepared uh, for that. During the session, I will demonstrate how a CL manager can be used to create a Bay configuration. Before starting the demo, I would like to show you the actual configuration created by Power Engineers for Interoperability Workshop. As you can see here, the interoperability configuration had several Bay configurations. You could see the single line diagram here. And if you see the IED section, you could see the high voltage section and base under the high voltage area, then low voltage and base under the low voltage section. And there are also substation clients um, associated with this devices. So the configuration comprises of all the protection devices, uh, switch controllers, bay controllers, and several other devices in the system. To make the demo quicker, I will reuse a Bay configuration drawing that was already created as part of this workshop. So what I will do is, I will save this configuration as a template. For this demo, I will choose Q02. So I can save this as a template for later use. So that I don't have to draw it again. So I have saved it. Now I will minimize and start with the demo project. So I have created a project and into this project I will add a single line diagram. I will add the substation. I will add the voltage level. And further, I will insert a bay that was already created or saved in the template. So you can see that this bay template was saved earlier from the other project. I will utilize this Bay template here. It is picking up all the components from the bay. Okay, so I'll start with the IED configuration part. As I mentioned earlier, I will start with the Q01 configuration. So for that, I will add a new folder and create or assign name as high voltage. Similarly, I will add another filter and assign the bay name. Further, I will add the devices into the configuration. So let us add the ICD file into the template. So for this webinar, I have prepared a few files from four manufacturers. And first device we could add is the GD60. Okay, so I'll assign the name as Q02. BPU3 GD60 to indicate the manufacturer and the IED model. So I'll import the file into the 
configuration. So this is the ICD file provided by G for the interoperability workshop. Further, I will go ahead and add the next IED, which is VCMAX switch controller. For that, I will assign another name, which is Q02 PAU1 VCMAX. I'll simply import the configuration here. Further, I will add a cell device into the configuration. For cell, I will associate a name like L four eleven L. This was the configuration provided by Cell for interoperability workshop. Further, I will add a client or a gateway device So this is RTAC from cell. I will try to stick to the same name and convention followed for the interoperability workshop. But here I have assigned manufacturer and IED model to identify these devices. So further, we could assign these devices into the filter. If you have more number of base, you could uh, create this grouping for your EC management of the configuration. Now let us uh, take the scenario of uh, the manufacturer providing you multiple versions of the ICD file. So now in this configuration, you could see that uh, the G, VCMAX, Cell, these configurations have already added. Now let us assume that you are going ahead with the configuration. So now in the case of uh, G, you could create a Goose control block. and you could create a data set and you could pick up signals for this data set say if i am interested in the breaker failure function could locate those elements and add them To the data set configuration. So whatever data points I'm interested in, I'm adding all of them into the configuration. Further I can save the configuration. So that means this goes with the data set has been added into this device. Further, I will create one more goose configuration. And here I could select a trip signal.
PTR bus, PTRC operate. So I'm looking for the operate signal. Being a ghost data set, I could remove this element from it. Okay, so now I have created two boost control blocks. Could save the configuration. I will try to keep the names consistent. Further, I will change the name of this data set to trip. Okay. Further, we can go ahead and create the report. So in this case, we could add the elements with the timestamp. So we could add the data objects in this case. Could also add the trip signal. Okay, now we have added the report configuration. Save the configuration. So we are almost done with the configuration in the GED60 device. Further, we could browse to the VCMAX. Here we already have the control block and the data set. So we don't have to create anything new. And we could create a goose for publishing the switch position. So let us go ahead and add that. Keep the names consistent. Okay, let us pick the data variables. I'm primarily interested in the circuit breaker status. So let us publish the circuit breaker position in this case. Okay, let us save the configuration. We could also create a report with the same information. Okay, we could create a data set with the data objects. Okay, 
Okay, now let's save the configuration. So let us go back to the G device. Yeah, we, we have created everything with respect to the PC Max and G device. Let us continue with the cell configuration. So in the case of cell, you would like to publish the breaker failure. So let us create the breaker fail goes. And into this, we could add the corresponding breaker fail logical data points. I'm looking for the breaker failure data points. Yeah, we could see these elements here. Let us add all the elements required. Okay, so we have added all the elements required for the breaker failure. Now save the configuration. Now let us also do the same for trip signal. Keep the meaningful names for the control block and the data set. Further select the trip. Trip PTRC. Okay. Further save the configuration. So we have created the goose configuration. Now let us proceed with the report. We are keeping the report ID unique in the system. Let us add the data objects. Okay, so we'll add these elements. Let us also add the trip signal. Okay, we have added all the data objects. Save the configuration. So we have pretty much configured all these elements, right? Now I would like to demonstrate the scenario of manufacturer providing new versions of the ICD files. So to demonstrate that I will have the cell newer version of ICD file let us browse and imagine that cell has provided you one more version of ICD file so you could see that uh, this file was provided on October 31st and later uh, during the interoperability workshop cell has updated the ICD file for their device and provided one more version so let us see how we could merge the ICD file, new ICD file from the manufacturer uh, into the same configuration. So we import the configuration file, call it a new version. Now 
I will have two IEDs from the same manufacturer, right? So now your objective is to replace your current configuration with a new one. So what you could do is you could use the replace or update option available in the tool. And when you select this option, you will be able to select the newer version of the IED, which is already imported into the project. Once you import the new configuration, the tool will identify the changes between your current project and the new project. Okay. So it will give you a visual indication of all the information. For example, whatever you have created or changed, those will be highlighted in this color. And whatever uh, logical nodes and data points which are exactly matching, those will be indicated in green. So here you could see that uh, whatever, is, whatever is indicated as green, that means all these logical nodes are present in the new configuration as well. And if you notice, you could see that there are certain configuration which are different between these two devices. So let us identify them. So in this scenario, you could see that the dataset breaker fail has been provided in the new version of the cell. And further, the GSC control, the same GSC control is not available in the newer version of the cell ICD file. Similarly, the dataset trip is not available, but another dataset called protection trip is available. Then there is a breaker fail trip available and report control is also created. So you could follow different methodology to uh, either use the new configuration from cell or use whatever you have already created. So in this scenario, I will try to use whatever we have created already because this is more matching with our substation requirement. So you need not accept all the configuration from the manufacturer. If uh, the manufacturer allowed to change the configurations, then you could modify them. So in this case, I will go ahead and map all these entries on the right hand side. Basically, I am dragging and dropping these entries one by one so that whatever we have created already we are trying to make sure that the, those information is not lost. Okay, so this, mean, this means uh, the data set that we have created, the control block created, you know, and report control blocks, all the elements are created in the newer version of the ICD file. Now you could also delete whatever you don't need. In this case, you are not interested uh, in this data set, right? So it is, we could delete the unnecessary data set configurations. Same is applicable for the goose control blocks. You could remove the goose control blocks if you are not interested in them. So I'm removing the unnecessary elements. Okay, now I have cleaned up all the unnecessary data sets and goose control blocks from the incoming new version of ICD file and I have copied all the uh, data sets and reports and everything that I have already created 
uh, in the system. Okay, now let us uh, apply the changes. So since we have only changed the dataset report and boost configurations, we are pretty sure that this is all we need uh, from the existing project. And other configuration from the new version of ICD file can be applied because here you could see that uh, there are a few LGOS logical nodes added, then there is a LSVS logical node added, otherwise there are no further changes. So we'll go ahead and accept the new version of the uh, cell 411 ICD file. Now all you have to do is apply changes. Now it will replace the current cell 411 configuration with a new version. And in the process, it will remove the newer version. It will rename the new version as the actual 411. So you could see that the position of the cell configuration has been moved down because of these changes. I'll create one more filter to the client. Okay. So now we have added the new version. Now let us uh, validate the project and make sure that everything is good. So here the error that you see is because of a single line diagram not having proper connections. So what you could do is you could browse to the configuration and find out where it is giving the error. Okay, so in this case, this function while importing, it did not have the termination. So we'll add a connectivity node and try to close that connection. I'll go ahead and connect. Okay. Now we'll validate and make sure that everything is good. Yeah, we are everything is good on this. And now to proceed with the configuration. Uh, our requirement is to map a few signals from G protection device to the switch controller and we also need to map a few other signals from cell device to the switch controller and further we need to map the sample value from the merging unit which is the switch controller and merging unit and that sample value need to go to the G device as well as cell device. Similarly, the breaker position need to go from the switch controller to both these devices. So let us start with the sample value mapping. So for that we browse to the sample value section in the VCMAX device for the uh, since our intention is to map this information to the cell device, we browse the cell and identify all the inputs supported in the cell. So you could see that uh, there are several signals added, right? So cell has already pre-populated these uh, signals here, but to you know to indicate the mapping process. I will go ahead and update these signals. So here the current is going to this location. Okay. So here you can see that uh, it had updated the, um, the map signals with uh, a different IED names uh, because of the actual interoperability workshop configuration. This was the IED names used, but here we are trying to you know use uh, 
uh, some other naming conventions and that's why the name is slightly different let us go ahead and update these data points i have updated the currents into these data points and further i will go ahead and update the voltages into the respective signals So in this naming convention, we have started with uh, the bay Q02, but in the original configuration, uh, we have followed a different naming convention. Okay, so here we could remove the mapping, whatever which are available, we could remove the unnecessary mappings if you are not interested in them. Okay, we just review whether there is any other configuration in the system. Okay, let us review yeah, it is uh, using the switch position for this demo will we'll not use it so we'll simply use the circuit breaker status alone it will not cause any harm to retain all these mappings but it would be better to keep it clean with only the configuration that we are interested in. So this device used to support many other data points. That's why you're seeing a bigger list here. Okay, I think we have done the cleanup. Let's also remove the other data points which are not really mandatory. Okay, so now we have only the sample value signals coming from the switch controller or the merging unit going into the cell device. Since we have completed this configuration, let us switch to the GED60. In this case, uh, we already have certain predefined signals and I will try to map these currents and voltages into the voltage uh, in the analog values. So we have a few analog values here. So let us try to map these. Assuming that uh, G will be able to, or the device will be able to handle this mapping. We have three currents and three voltages. Okay, now we are done with the sample value mapping into these two devices. Now let us proceed with the goose mapping. 
so for that we'll first start with the g t16 so since we have mapped all the sample value our assumption is that both the protection devices g d60 and cell 411 both will have necessary signals to you know calculate the rms or other information and these devices can issue the breaker failure and trip signals now let us take the signal back to the switch controller so for that we'll have to select the switch controller here and map the CB1 this is the circuit breaker and here we could accept the signal in one of the inputs so let us say it can accept the value in one of these inputs right so we could map the opx and uh, we could also map phase a phase b and phase c signals Okay, now we have mapped all the breaker failure signals. Now let us switch to the trip signal and select the same switch controller. Now here we could get the start. And operate signals okay now we have mapped both breaker failure and trip signals now let us browse to the second protection device and map its signals so for that we browse to the same switch controller and look for the slots where we could accept the signals so here we could map these signals into yeah we'll map op okay now we have map phase A then proceed to phase B and then phase C okay so we have completed the mapping of the breaker failure from the second protection device now let us select the trip to the same process browse and select the uh, signals 
and further map the trip signal. I will use the input TR4 for this. So with this we have completed all the goose mappings required for this configuration. So what we have done is we have mapped necessary signals from GD60 uh, and the protection device cell 411 to the VCMAX device. Now let us also map the VCMAX goose circuit breaker status to both these devices. For this, we'll go ahead and select the cell device first and we'll identify a signal which is VB001. So we'll map circuit breaker status into this. Assuming that it can process the circuit breaker status. Now let us switch to the G D60 and figure out where we could map the circuit breaker status. So here if you scroll you could see that there are certain signals available for accepting the position. So this is saying that it is IND pause so we could assume that uh, it can it will be able to accept the circuit breaker status so you might have to check with the manufacturer to find out what, where exactly they are expecting these signals so here we have taken a safe assumption that uh, these are the inputs used for this purpose so now we have completed all the goose mappings we could save the configuration and do a validation it would be a good step to do before you know going to the next milestone so now since we have completed all the ghost mappings let us proceed with the report so report mapping is pretty simple uh, all we have to do is the selection of logical nodes. So here we browse to the device and here I, have, I can find the device here. So you could also show the filter and look for the client logical nodes and select the logical node here. And since we have mapped the report from VCMAX device, let us proceed to the GD60. To the same process, select the report, go to the logical node mapping, select the cell RTAC, Select the client logical node and finally go to the cell device. Select the report select the attack select the client logical node. So with this we have pretty much completed the configuration now we could review the configuration at a high level and make sure that everything is good. So for that we could go to the projects and external signal and find out all the signal matrices are as per the expectation. So here you could see that the VCMAX merging unit is sending the sample values and 
these currents and voltages are published and going to the GED60 certain data points and further these are going to the cell device so with this you have you, get, you could confirm that all the sample value mappings are done properly further you could see that the switch position from the switch controller which is the same VCMAX device it is going to the cell RTAC as a report and further this data is also going to the G device and finally this is also going to the VB01 so you have you could, you could verify both report and goose mappings here further going to the GD60 you could verify that all this production signals the go signals are going into the VCMAX these are the trip signals and further you could see that trip signal is going here and further from the other device you could see that the breaker failure signals are going into T3 and the trip signals are going into T4 it's pretty much covered all the possible scenarios and here you could verify that the report is going to the attack and here you could also verify that these reports breaker failure and PTRC these status indications are going to the attack so this pretty much covers everything and if you would like to apply certain filters and find out which are the ghost signals and which are the reports which are the sample values you could apply these filters and verify them you could also export this information into CSV files so now with this we have completed the configuration finally we could set the network addressing and make sure that all the addresses are set correctly so to GD60 we could set the configuration as uh, yeah, as per the interoperability workshop this is the IP address assigned for the G device so that's why I'm trying to set similar IP addresses here okay we are done with the access point configuration now let us proceed to the VCMAX so this is not a yeah here we could assign another IP address Okay, we are done with the configuration now let us proceed to the other device yeah this already has the IP address assigned change the gateway to match with whatever we need and here you could see that there is a virtual IOP subnetwork right this is the subnetwork we need to be in so I'll change all the subnetworks into that yeah it's complaining that uh, there is a duplicate IP I'll try to assign a different range of IP address here just to make sure that this is not conflicting with anything now 
we could change the sub networks Okay, it is asking to assign an IP address. So we'll assign the IP addresses so that it doesn't cause any confusion. Okay, so we have assigned all the uh, subnetworks to all these devices. Now let us save the configuration. Okay. Now there is a feature to remove invalid subnetworks. So that means since you have reassigned all the subnetworks, there could be some subnetworks without any uh, devices associated with. So let us remove them. Okay. If you go to the subnetwork configuration, reload this, then you will see the latest information. This is the only subnetwork you have now. And there are these other devices you have in the network. And further, you have these many goose signals in the network. Similarly, you have these many sample values and you have these many reports. Okay, so this completes the cycle of configuration from substation specification uh, till the generation of a CD file. Now let us export the SCD file. Okay, we forgot to assign the logical functions uh, from single line diagram into the actual devices. So let us map the circuit breaker. We know that the switch controller is going to handle the circuit breaker. So we have assigned it here. And similarly, we have assigned the current transformers, PCTR, we assigned the second current transformer and third current transformer signal so we have mapped it here here and the voltage transformer also we could do the same thing we could assign the logical functions for the voltage transformer We'll have three instances of TVTR. We could map these to the merging unit. And to indicate the protection functions, we could assign the logical nodes RBRF we could also add the PTRC to indicate all the necessary functions required. Okay, 
we could map these functions to the respective devices. So we have pretty much completed the configuration. So we have assigned the PTRCs and RBRF into the protection devices. We have assigned the circuit breaker status to the uh, switch controller and the TBTRs and TCTRs into the uh, you know merging unit switch or switch controller. So with this, we have kind of completed the configuration and now we could go ahead and export the file so right click on the workspace and export and further you may select all the contents browse the file wherever you want it By default, it will validate the contents using schema version 2007B4. Just proceed with that. It will export all the necessary contents from the project. Now, there is another use case where you could receive the IID files back from vendors, right? So I will demonstrate by importing the IID file from cell. Let us see how that functionality works. So let us browse to the ICD file folder and look for IIDs. So G doesn't have it. And if we browse the IIDs, we could see that uh, there is a IID file from cell, right? So let us uh, try to import and find out how we can manage this. IID import and ICD new version import are more or less the same. From a CL manager perspective, we allow merging of ICD or IID into the project without much difference. For the user, the experience will be almost similar. So I'll keep the extension as IID to indicate that this is a new file received. Let us assign the subnetworks. Yeah, we could do this later also. So it doesn't matter. Okay. So once the IID is imported, we could do the same procedure as earlier. So right click on the current configuration file. Use the replace or update option. Select the IID, whatever you have imported recently, and click OK. So during this process, the SEL manager will identify what are the differences between the newly imported IID and the current configuration in the file. It will compare all the details and show you the differences. So here you could see that all the logical nodes are exactly the same. There are no differences at all. The only difference is this pointing out are in this area. So let us find out what are the differences. So you can see here the IID contains the breaker failure instead of breaker fail. Synchro check protection trip, 
and the GCB names are also different. So it's up to the substation engineer to communicate with the vendor and resolve these differences. If the substation configuration person is okay with all these changes, we could simply accept all these changes by clicking apply changes. But if there are some uh, changes or differences that they need to resolve by making additional configurations in the IED, that can be communicated to the IED vendor and IED could be reconfigured accordingly. And further, uh, the new ver newer version of the IED can be imported into the tool to review all these changes. So this process allows the substation engineer to make sure that whatever configuration they wanted are applied to the device. For example, uh, if you look at the IP address, in this case IP addresses are exactly matching, but in some scenarios if there is a mismatch in the IP address uh, is applied to the device, then you could easily identify those as changes using these indications. So that way this uh, act as a kind of a version control for the substation engineer to review and accept all the changes. Okay. Now I will show how this configuration can be simulated in a C6150 test For that I will start the test set. Test set will start by default in the client mode. You could switch the mode to server whenever you need. Once you switch the mode to server, you could browse the SAD file. So in this case, I am more interested in the SAD import. From this SCL file, you open the configuration and select whatever you are interested in. So in this case, uh, these are the IEDs that you would like to simulate. Right? So you could select these IEDs. So I'm selecting all the IEDs that we need to simulate. You could also select the VC Max device. So okay. So here we don't see the IP because this device doesn't support the IP addressing looks like. So yeah, this could be a goose and sample value device only. Uh, so whatever report configuration we have added may not be applied on this device. So let us proceed with the simulation. So now the devices are up and running. Let us add the same configuration the client mode. So test set supports both client and server simulations and it also supports monitoring mode so that it can listen to the traffic between client and server. If you are more interested in the monitoring mode functions please uh, subscribe to our previous webinar there we have uh, explained how the monitoring mode functions can be utilized. To proceed with this simulation, let us import the SAD file and we'll proceed with the addition of these devices into the client mode of operation.
just use the goose functionality here. Okay. Okay, so in this scenario, you could see that these devices are online as a server. If you have a SCADA, you could test the device functionality from 650 perspective using the server mode. And if you have a device or IED, you could test the SCADA functions using the client simulation option. If you browse to the Goose, you will be able to see the Goose exchanges between devices. So here you are seeing the simulated Goose from this uh, server mode. And here in the client, it is showing you the Goose that are received from the remote devices. Similarly, you could um, browse to the reports and enable the reports as needed. Yeah, for this, you may change the integrity period and enable the report. We browse to the next device and enable the corresponding reports as needed. You could issue controls if needed. So all the 650 functions can be invoked using these options. So here you can see the report history and goose history. If you are specifically interested in certain reports, you could add them to the report monitoring pane. Similarly, if you are interested in any goose, you could add those goose control blocks into the goose monitor pane and start monitoring them. This gives you full visibility to the system. And in server mode, there is an option to simulate data points. So you could uh, change the values. You could browse to the data sets, change the values like uh, record failure or any other data points. You could expand and change. And generate the corresponding goose and reports for example if you would like to make the changes here then you can see that the corresponding reports and goose are changed you can see this change here so this gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of monitoring and simulating the data so once the configuration is created using a CL manager, uh, you could review the configuration changes between uh, substation configuration tool and the IED configuration tool. You could accept the changes as you like, communicate the changes as necessary. Once everything is done, you could also simulate and test the devices or SCADA using the 6.50 test set. Yeah, with this, uh, we have completed the uh, presentation. Um, I think uh, we have consumed uh, more time than we were supposed to. Um, we are already 20 minutes late uh, into the presentation. Uh, so we have reached out to most of the uh, participants uh, when they asked for the questions. We have responded to all of them. Uh, if they, if I, if I, we missed any anybody, we will reach out to them and respond. And there was a correction uh, in our presentation. Uh, the two uh, companies were missed out from the uh, participants list. Uh, actually, we prepared the list of uh, IO 
participants based on the ICD files posted, but actually Omicron and Healings were also participated. And uh, since they did not post any uh, ICD files, uh, that was the reason why we, we uh, accidentally missed out their names. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, so Larry, do you want to add anything? closing out add uh, the tools section itself could uh, run a little bit longer because there's a lot of details we didn't go through but i just wanted to say even though we ran long thank you everyone for um, taking time out of your day to uh, participate in our presentation yeah thanks a lot yeah closing out the session thank you thank you